Well, power density is, is quite a misunderstood subject. And really what power density is about, it's about helping us understand the relationship between physical space and power in kilowatts. And physical space can be expressed in square footage and cabinets. It can be expressed in U-height, many different ways to express that. And on the power side, we focus on kilowatts as the main uh, idea that we're uh, specifying and understanding over there. And kilowatts can relate both to the power from an energy and electrical standpoint, but also the cooling itself can also be measured in kilowatts. So when we design data centers, we must match up the power and cooling capacities and deliver them to a physical space. And it's very important to understand power density because even if I have a one megawatt facility, the design is considerably different if I have to concentrate all that power into a very small space versus distributing it broadly over a much larger space. And I also need to understand the nature of the loads and whether they, for example, vary spatially. For example, there might be some cabinets that are very low density mixed with high density cabinets. And uh, there also might be cabinets whose power density varies with time because the power actually goes up and down due to power management functions in there. So all of those things have a tremendous impact on the design of data centers. If I tell you you've got a one megawatt data center on one hand and it has a certain number of square feet on the other hand, that's simply not enough. We need a lot more information about power density before we can successfully design and manage a data center. So the traditional method of using watts per square foot is the most common method used, yet it has led to an unbelievable amount of miscommunication about the operation and the performance in terms of design of data centers. And some of the reasons why it, we consider it a very unfortunate and bad metric to use are first, what's included in the area calculation. When I talk about an area like square feet, what is included in that area? It's not well defined. For some people, it may include the entire footprint of the building. For others, it may include just the white space. Uh, it may include access ways. Uh, and there's a lot of ambiguity about that because, for example, uh, if it, I might have two similar designs. One, the air conditioners are located in the room. One, they're located outside of the room. Am I counting them in the area? All of these uh, confusions about what's in the area calculation uh, cause very significant differences in people's conclusions about the performance or the design of the same data center. Second, what's included in the power calculation is not defined. Uh, you know, when we talk about watts, it, are we talking about the actual IT watts that are going to the servers? Are we talking about the watts that are entering that room that might be going to other devices such as air conditioners or UPSs and so on? Or are we talking about power going to the entire facility? And all of these are different numbers, and therefore the calculation of density will be different depending on our assumptions about that. Another problem that's very important is that it, the uh, watts per square foot type specification provides no information at all about the power variation across a population of IT cabinets. I can have a cabinet that has patch panels in it and draws zero watts, and I can have another cabinet that uh, draws 20 kilowatts, and presumably that would average out to something that appeared to be 10 kilowatts a cabinet. That's not enough information for design. I need to know the variation among uh, cabinet densities so I can understand the necess necessity of delivering high density power or cooling to a cabinet or set of cabinets not simply delivering that bulk power and cooling to a large spread out area. And finally, the other p missing piece is that the watts per square foot calculation doesn't help us understand what's going on in a changing growth plan or a plan that is modular and built out over time. When I talk about density in the early phase of a data center, uh, am I referring to the density capability of the data center if it were populated, or am I uh, referring to the density of the 
uh, data center as it's actually operating with, say, only a few racks in it because it's in its startup phase. So this whole idea of uh, what is going on in a changing data center environment uh, is very vague when we talk about something like watts per square foot. Well, when using the traditional method, we've got a very ambiguous specification. And therefore, it can be very difficult to line up the specification or the performance of the actual data center against the actual IT requirement. So we can't predict what kind of IT can actually be installed in that data center, and we can't predict how it might behave when it is installed. And so one of the things that commonly goes wrong is if the density of a design was too low and we deploy IT equipment at too high a density in it, we can end up with unpredictable results including overloads and overheating problems and hotspots in the data center. If we try and solve that problem through over-specification, for example, specifying a very blanket high power density capability within the data center, we can often needlessly drive up first cost and operating expenses quite dramatically. So one thing we know for sure is that the biggest problem with the traditional method is that it's a single number. And power density cannot be sufficiently described with a single number so that you can properly design around it or predict the performance of a system based on it. So the better method uh, that we propose takes it, uh, considers that IT varies among cabinets it varies over time, and we have to have a method that comprehends the issues of modularity and growth. The new approach that we propose uh, to helps you understand space requirements, to help you understand space requirements and power density has four key features. First, we use the cabinets as the unit of IT space, not floor area. And for those devices that don't exactly match as a cabinet or come in a cabinet, there's a simple method to convert them to equivalency of cabinets. The second is the density specification is hierarchical. Understanding a hierarchy of cabinets assembled into pods, assembled into rooms, assembled into a total facility. And the densities of the, in the hierarchy may actually vary. And third, we need to quantify uncertainty regarding density because simply having a density number is not sufficient because almost no user can deploy exactly at the density that they predict. They will have some spread of density, maybe some below and maybe some above that. So we must quantify that uncertainty and put it into the model to make sure we actually can handle the expected variation of density that we see. And it's important to understand that cabinets vary in power and bulk power that we supply to rooms deals with averages, but power distribution systems that deliver power to cabinets have to deal with peaks. So we must understand the differences between average and peak power in our model. And of course, we need to recognize now the coming trend that power dynamically varies with time. And some attributes, like efficiency, are driven by averages of energy consumption over time, but some attributes, like capacity, are driven by peak capacities and densities with time. So it's very important, we believe, to establish the correct flow of these ideas in the planning process. Instead of starting with area and trying to figure out density or other attributes from that, we believe the smart way to approach this problem is to start with capacity and density requirements and from that compute the area requirements of the data center. And when we follow that process, we can incorporate specifically and unambiguously other floor space requirements such as egress, ramps, safety equipment, uh, and, and other kinds of uses of floor space, such as reserve floor space for future requirements, or even reserve floor space for 
the potential of deploying at a much lower density than our expectation. By following the process of starting with capacity requirements and then power density, and we can have a logical flow that allows us to develop a clear and shared understanding among all the stakeholders of what the real floor space capacity requirements are for a data center.